Gee, I'm bored. What are we gonna do today? How about we review more Transformers? Oh, what's that? You're bored of it already? Okay. Well then, let's not review a not-so-transformer, because it's not technically a transformer, even if it does transform into something. And I've just gone cross-eyed. Anyway, look at what I got here. Flavor! Right! I'm throwing in some mix here in this Kool-Aid of bland Transformer toy reviews that you're all getting so repetitive over. But anyway, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is uh, this is what you call a um, a Mars converter, right? So I picked up this thing for the very nice price of $9.99 here. Hopefully that means that the quality isn't too bad because I've heard some stories about these things. But really. What intrigues me about it is the fact that as soon as I walked into my nearest Walgreens store, it was standing right there on the shelf and caught my eye. It, it's just not many things do that outside of the Studio Series and maybe a couple of uh, other things. Really, this is just something that caught my attention. I was like, you know what? I want this. I want it. And here it is. So let's get to it, right, shall we? So taking a look at the package, as per take of every single video review on this channel. It's a huge box, it really is. I mean, this is probably the same size as Studio Series Grimlock's box. As a matter of fact, hang on a sec. Let's go ahead and test that theory. So here's the Studio Series box for Leader Class Grimlock. And actually, this is actually a bit taller. Right, what's the thickness between these two? Almost about even. So... Yeah, there you go. Anyone that was curious about that, I just answered you right. So, you know, for $9.99 against uh, what's like uh, $49.99, something like that, I mean, you actually, uh, when it comes to the packaging, you get more bang for your buck. And it is actually really nice packaging. I like the fact that it shows the robot mode for this combat tank and a few steps into the transformation, kind of like the original Transformer comic books from Marvel, where it goes one step here, one step there, and then boom. There you go. Now you got your alternate mode. Pretty, pretty intriguing. It's it's very catchy, especially the colors. I like the lime green and the black. It really works with the white and the silver. You can definitely tell that they are trying to get influenced by Transformers, especially by the logo here. I mean, look at that, obviously. Right, so... I don't know much about Mars here. All I know is these things have popped up here and there at my Walgreens, at my Walmart, and uh, I think a couple of Targets actually sell them as well. But um, yeah, again, not very familiar for this. Um, I've picked up a couple of these before in the past, but that's uh, about as much as my history on this line here. It has lasted a long time, a lot longer than the revs. You remember that nonsense? Yeah, that was something. But uh, anyway, yeah, um, I wonder if they're still making these or if this is just like leftovers that are just popping up here and there. I, I don't know. Maybe I should look up this thing if, uh, if they've got like a website or something for it. Anyway, I'm getting way off the topic here, ain't I? Let's just go ahead and uh, let's take a look at what company actually made this. Uh, Happy Kid. Happy Kid. Ah, Happy Kid toy. Ah, I see the toy in the back. I didn't notice what was going on there. But, uh, yeah. Age of Sigmarium Plus. Cybertronics. Okay, now you're definitely trying. Cybertronics. You're one step closer from Cybertron or Cybertronian. Right. Hey, it's me. Right, it's me. Yeah, so anyway, Mars Converter. Um, on the side here, we got the picture of this, uh, what's this thing called again? Uh, combat tank. That's the name. Combat tank. Right, so it must be a mech or something. Anyway, there's your robot, and then there's the tank, the Mars logo, and the not Transformers font, and uh, Cybertronics on this back side of the packaging here. It's, uh, it's very simplistic. I mean, it's basically just like Transformers in a way. It's got some nice detailing going on in the background. Uh, combat tank converts from tank to robot or robot to tank as you can see the circle right there it is so um anyway it's got some speed power skill defense and intelligence so wait a minute whoa 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 so it's not a mech then if it's got intelligence then clearly it has a mind of its own right so 
Maybe they are Cybertronian from the planet Cybertronics. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, also available in this line here. As you can see, we got others. And I have seen these here and there, except for maybe this jet fighter at the very end. Right, so anyway, happy kid, happy kid, happy kid, yeah. Okay, so, oh yeah, nothing on this side here except for the the same picture that we've seen on the front and the other side and the back. And that's basically it for this packaging. So what do you say we uh, take this guy out and uh, see what it does? So moving right along, before we take a look at the robot at hand, let's take a look at his quick instructions here. By quick, I mean it took me about, oh, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes max to actually get this transformation down right for his tank mode, which is a little finicky at first, but after a while, I'm sure you'll get used to it if you want to go through this. But uh, the quality on this paper is, it's... It was printed on, let's just be honest. This came from an actual printer, right? So, anyway, there's that. So, with that said, let's talk about uh, what we got here. This, uh, this tank. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's pretending to be what it's not supposed to be, and that's a transformer, right? So, Autobot or Decepticon? I don't know, you decide. Anyway, Battle Tank here in its robot mode is leaning forward, as you can tell. And um, it's not a really good profile, is it? You can see that uh, the head is way too far out from the actual chest, and the, um, the stomach area is way too far back. So are the arms. Uh, they're too far back unless they're not pushed all the way forward which i'm sure i've already done that so that's as far as they go um yeah the only reason that he's leaning like this is because if i go about trying to get him to stand up just right which i'm sure is possible but as i'm doing it on camera here this is probably as best as i'm gonna get because he has a tendency to fall back on himself it's not because he's top heavy it's just because the joints on this guy is completely loose like for instance the arms completely loose the swivel joint to his knees are completely loose uh the feet are even completely loose the heel spurs while they do go in the position where they will stay just fine if he's leaning back they are pretty loose as well, but thank goodness they actually transform in the right direction. So again, it just cancels that out. So anyway, um, beyond that, uh, here's a look at the back of this guy. He's, uh, yeah, um, you get what you pay for. Let's put it that way. You get what you pay for. I'm sure this figure would stand up a lot better if this wasn't a smooth surface here. Like if I was to put this figure on top of... Um, let's say like my carpet or something i'm sure he'll hold up just fine because there's a lot of friction but uh outside of that there's not much to really say about this robot mode it looks okay from certain angles like from the front view it looks pretty good i'm gonna be honest but again it's that side profile that just really kills it and uh so much for the back well, they tried to hide away some of the hollowness on this guy, even though there's still gaps here due to the design of this toy. At least these flaps back here do hide up the rest of what's going on for the upper section of his legs pretty well. Uh, not much else to really say about this. Again, it was $9.99. I wasn't expecting any really good quality here, but I will say, eh, you know... I don't know what to say about it. I mean, this is like something new. It's not something that I really review here on this channel, so I'm having a hard time of making sense of what to think about this guy. A part of me does like it, and a part of me doesn't like it. I mean, that's the way it is. It's 50-50, but at least he does come with a blaster here, so you don't get just a robot here. Um, can he hold the thing is the real question, because I haven't actually tried putting this in his hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he can Especially if you go about snapping it in there. That did not sound good. As a matter of fact, I think we probably just cracked open his hand. Probably. Nope. Never mind. Okay, so I guess it just locks in there. Well, it didn't snap that time. So I don't know what that snapping sound was all about, but hey, there you go. Uh, can he hold it up? Yeah, actually, he can hold it up pretty good. As long as his arms aren't going inward and outward, he actually holds his weapon 
to a certain degree until it starts sloping down. But for now, it's holding. Uh, this guy does have a lot of pins on him. Lots of pin joints here. Hardly any screws. There are some areas where there are screwed in bits, but... Everything seems to be a pin, and that's the problem with toys these days. When they're, like, pinned, if they're not pressured in all the way, you have complications like this, where you can't hold a pose. And I'm sure that this figure could hold a pose if the joints were actually tighter, because I will tell you, he does have quite a bit of articulation for a cheap $10 action figure that you can get from any uh, drugstore. Anyway... Uh, excluding the fact that his head doesn't have any articulation, I'm not so sure why that is, because it does kind of move a little bit, but there's, there's like this, uh, detail here that's letting you know, hey, it stops at this point here, there's no way to really turn his head, so, I don't know what to make of that, but, anyway, he does have, uh, inward and outward movement at the shoulders on very weak pins, you do have a swivel joint that you can get a full... 360 rotation at the shoulders. He does have bicep swivel joint, which is actually quite amazing. He has a uh, single jointed elbows that does look like they're designed to be double jointed, but they are not. So the forearm down here makes up for that. So you could say it's a little double jointed, but it's not exactly in the same area as the elbow. Anyway, uh, you do have wrist swivel. There's something that Transformer figures don't have much these days. Uh, you do have a waist swivel joint. You actually have an ab crunch because of the engineering on this guy. And now let's talk about uh, the legs here because as I get his arms out of the way here. Anyway, it, they are on a ball joint. So you do get this much kicking going forward, which is really nice for this thing, actually. And then going back, you can get it all the way up as if he's kicking his head. Eh, 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 eh. Right. Let's talk about the JCVD split as I get his other arm out of the way. Can he do it? Can he pull it off? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hey, look at that. Full JCVD split. No! Well, that was unexpected. <sighs> yeah. They're pretty tight ball joints. They will hold a pose just fine at the hips. But, if you go about splitting them all the way, you disassemble the figure because it's those kind of ball joints where they're not supposed to go any higher than that. But the fact that they can actually go up all the way and stay in place is something until you let go. Right. So anyway, putting that back in, we do have a knee joint here. Does get 9 degrees of bend. There's also another joint in there, but it's hindered because of the back panel here holding the leg in place and not making it look hollow any further. Um, there is the swivel joint below that. And then the feet have some articulation with a hinge joint for up and down movement due to transformation. And the toe actually flips up and down because of the design of this thing. Right. Look at that toe. Right. Um, no ankle rocker pivot. That's to be expected. I didn't expect much from this guy. I gotta say, I'm not completely disappointed on him. Again, I see some good points about this guy, but there are some things... That really does make him a big turnoff, including the fact that it's a cheap wannabe Transformer action figure here. But, uh, you know, in all honesty, if the joints were tighter, maybe if there was a little more cleanup on the side and in the back, maybe this would actually be a pretty good figure and an alternative to maybe Transformers in some way. I don't know. Right. Anyway, we spent enough time on this guy in his robot mode, but I will, before we head off we'll go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparisons with grimlock here why not we brought out his package earlier and did a comparisons between those two so uh yeah here's the robot the robot and as you can see he's actually taller than grimlock his head stops about right here unless you want to count the crest piece here which then he would actually be just nit taller than uh, the tank dude here but uh yeah you know, sides aside, not not too bad. Uh, let's do one more comparison, it's just because. So let's bring in a tank versus tank, and there you go. Um, Studio Series Brawl. Obviously, this guy's going to be bigger. But just because it's bigger doesn't mean you get much in the terms of quality. And, you know, it's just that. Right. So, anyway... Now that that's taken care of, what do you say we go about transforming this guy again for the second time? And I'm hopefully be able to transform him much 
quicker than last time. So anyway, what I like to do to start off with is flip out his chest panel here so I can push his head in and then close this panel up right here like so. Next, come up to his arms here and bring it up on this hinge. There's a tab, which you'll see right there that goes into that little slot right there. And get that all lined up just right. Like so. There we go. And that's pretty much one section. Let's do the same on this side here. Get that to tab in. And it should go in there just fine. There we go. There's that right. Okay. So, with all this done here, what we want to do next is work with the legs. So, let's go ahead and open up these panels back here. Like so. And then flip in his feet. And they are actually going to tab in right here, just like that. Repeat the same process on this side here. This one is a little troublesome, but there we go. I got it. Alright, it's going to be these tabs right here. All about the lower section of his legs, which is going to make up the turn section. Let's go ahead and get all that tabbed into place. And they do hold pretty tight, actually, so that's a good connection. So quality isn't all around bad on this toy. So, uh, you know, there you go. Anyway, some good points on this guy. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the chest bed here, and we're going to flip it up. So this whole section right here is going to come straight up like that. And then what we can do is we can flip this panel back open again to start off with. We're going to take his legs. We're going to adjust them to a 90 degrees bend, like that. Or at least that's how I remember it being. We'll find out, because if not, it's going to look weird. Anyway, let's go ahead and flip this whole section this way, like so. Just like that. Alright. So if I did all this correct, these panels right here should close back up. And this should come down, this should come down. And we got ourselves something here, right, right, there we go. I'll just go ahead and flip up this section here because um, we got to get this uh, barrel in here somehow, which I'm sure I should have done it the opposite way at first. What I should have done is, as I go about untransforming this section here by flipping these panels back open, I should have left these open so I could have enough space to come in here and bring this down so you can see there's a groove right here that's going to coincide with uh, these tabs right here. So they're just going to slot right up in here like that. Good tight connection. Close these back up. Bring this all back down so I can fold this back into place and tab all this back in place. Stay in place. Stay in place. Right, so now that we got all that taken care of, what we need to do now is flip back up his chest panel. Get that out of the way. And the shoulders are going to slide all the way back, just like this, fold in, and then what you need to do, well first you need to fold down these flaps here, we'll come back to those in just a minute, but next what we need to do is as we got the arms back all this way, do you see this gap right here, we need to close that up, we need to push it in, just like that, and that should hold all this in place for now. Repeat the same process on this side, see the gap? push it in it locks in pretty good and the last thing to do is we need to take these two panels right here and we need to get them to tab into one another just like that and pretty much the only other thing to really do is just readjust everything to your liking rotate down his missiles here on the side of his turret and close that back up and there we go that's uh Battle tank in its uh, tank mode. Right. What else can I say? It's cool. I'm not going to lie about it. Sure, it could use a lot more paint and maybe a little more detail on the side. But outside of that, I mean, it's a, what it is. It's a tank. And my camera's making it look like a normal green color right now. This is actually not. It's more of a beige green color. It, it's not exactly complete green. It's just plain weird with the thing. But regardless... I like it. I actually like this little tank. It, it's, well, it's not little. I'll go ahead and show you by side-by-side -side comparisons with Studio Series Shadow Raider. As you can see, for a deluxe class action figure, this is more in the line of Voyager, maybe even leader class at this scale. So, 
And no, by no means is it small. It's actually uh, pretty heavy as well. It does have some heft to it. It felt pretty hollow on its robot mode, but in its tank mode, this thing holds up actually pretty good. All the panels line up pretty nice. It's not an eyesore like some of your generic Transformer figures these days where some of the panels don't line up too well. This is actually pretty flush. And one thing that this tank Transformer here has that Studio Series Brawl will never have, and most tank Transformer figures these days, the uh, turn actually does rotate a complete 360. That's freaking awesome for this thing. And again, it, it holds up really good and it's very compact. It looks cool. It's got some nice details going on here with this M103. I'm guessing this is uh, Mars 1 number 3 of this line. I'm not so sure. I don't know what the FX0254 uh, represents, but uh, yeah. Uh, you do have some um, generic symbols that you would see on army suits or something like that, or somewhere in the army, mainly on vehicles, so like a tank. And uh, this here, it's a pretty cool looking tank, and it does have a little bit of some paint application here to make up with the fact that it is just $9.99. Right, so for $9.99, while the robot mode may be a junker, I gotta say, the tank mode is phenomenal. And it does roll, as it should. It does have wheels on the bottom. Obviously, the treads aren't going to roll, but at least the wheels do roll. They're not stiff. They're not tight. They're not too loose. They feel just fine. Some nice glossy paint, by the way, for the treads. That's really good. So, yeah, overall, I'm actually amazed by this tank mode. Now, I'm sure that there are others in this line that may be a hit or miss, but I gotta be honest here. Outside of this robot mode, I think this little tank here is a hit. I actually do like it. it. It's so cool. It's gonna look nice on my shelf. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it besides letting it display in my room for a little while. May I keep it? I don't know. May I actually give it to my little nephew? I, I don't know. His birthday's coming up. I think he might actually enjoy something like this as long as I don't tell him that it transforms. But, uh, regardless, it's up to you guys. I'm just... Filling in some flavor here that you all have been demanding. So I'll try other things in times. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe I might get glued to this line. Maybe I might want to review the rest of these Mars figures and whatever may be offered up in the future. If this line truly is still going here, that would be quite an achievement. Anyway, questions or comments, you know what to do. Hit it down below in the comment section of the video. If you like today's video review, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to give me a sub up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Don't forget to throw in the towel and I'll go back to Transformers because that's all you guys ever really want. Anyway, until then, this is the Unprofessional Toy Reviewer Redis Power signing off saying thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you whenever you see me.